All right, round two, playing first. Hmm, we're gonna keep it. No red mana, but we do have the scoundrel into potential, I guess, Mark the Vampire. And if we draw red mana, we're actually in pretty good shape. We get to stay pretty busy. I mean, it's it's tough to not keep a hand that can play a turn two wanted scoundrel. What are we naming? Dinosaur? Pirate. We're naming Pirate. Alright. Okay, so blue-black pirates. Guess we gotta worry about that bounce. No play, okay. Well, we're gonna go for it. Got nothing else I can do. Alright, we're gonna get got by some Skullduggery here. Dive down. Well, that actually is fine too. Does nothing. Does nothing. Good to know that our opponent has that. It's a great card. Been a big advocate of dive down since early in the format. Not the beginning, admittedly. But not I've gotten a chance to play around with it. God, we are a land away from just punishing our opponent with the Mark of the Vampire. There we go. So now we'll just mark and get in. We can't really block. And if they kill our guy, they get a two for one, but the thing dealt ten damage on its own, I'd say it did its job. At this point, they're like, nah, we're jumping, we're done. Which is fine. So, Wanted Scoundrel has dealt four damage to our opponent, killed a dive down, or gotten rid of a dive down, killed a desperate castaway. Yeah, I would say if they two for one and now, we, it did its job. It did enough. I am happy enough with what it's done. If they contract kill, they get four treasures. That's pretty good. Sure. So, we draw a land. We get to Dark Nourishment Punish, too, if they double. Well, I guess they have two lands, though. Uh, still worth it. Land me? No? Hmm. Well. I guess we play Buccaneer. See if we get the land. No, we do. So now we chill. Jedi Plunderer. You got it. Um. Sure. Alright. So now we can attack, though, which is the good news. So we'll swing with our Scoundrel. We have the Dark Nourishment. So we can Dark Nourish as necessary. Ooh, we have Short Strike, too. It's so nasty. It's so dirty. 
I think we still just swing with the scoundrel, though. We don't want them to think we've got a trick. Yeah, I think it's much more punishing, honestly, to just dark nourishment the interloper. And then kill that. And then gain more life. And then pass. So they can not explore just yet. Sure. So they play the Prosperous Pirates, get two more treasure, and then we'll just bash with the Scoundrel into the 7-7, seven, seven, and they can't really block because we have Sure Strike. And if they do block, we kill it. If they don't block, we... Uh spit out a couple till and Ollie's knights or sun crown hunter if we draw land they have two cards in hand five mana up though so i guess i need to be conscious of that but another mark too huh all right well let's get in with the scoundrel Oh boy. Alright, so with nine from the sure strike, we'll kill the dead eye thing and the tracker. Seems good to me. Oh yeah. Wanted Scoundrel, just doing so much work. Just the quantity of work that it's done. So impressive. All right, Till and Ollie's Knight. Then we pass. Eat some treasure there? Why? Oh, to get red mana. Alright, so Star of Extinction is my guess. No, Sun Crown Hunter. Not even Not even the Star of Extinction. Okay. What else we got? Dire Fleet Interloper. Got it. And it's a 2-2. Two, two. Okay. Sure. So, I think the play is... Mm, Fire Cannon Blast, too? Nice. So if I mark, they can still double block. We could kill two things. They could double block here and keep their pirate, too. So... Hmm. I'm trying to think of the best play here. Swing a scoundrel. Yeah, probably just swing with scoundrel, see how they trade. See what they do. And then we'll probably fire cannon blast. I'm assuming they're just going to trade off the hunter and then we'll f uh, blast the pirate. Because that'll set us up for just our fatties coming down next turn. So I think there's a pretty good chance they just trade, which is fine.
They get some treasure, which at this point is irrelevant. It's kind of why Wanted Scoundrel is such an excellent card. Because they have one card in hand and infinite mana already anyway, so really irrelevant. Then we'll Fire Cannon Blast the Pirate, which leaves us set up for a monstrous our next turn. That'll really start doing a number on our opponent. So next turn, Monster Sar, start bashing, begin the beats. Sure. Guess no need to attack with the Buccaneer into a castaway. Alright, so we'll take out the castaway. And pass. All right, well, that's good news. So now we can just mark our monster sar and they still can't kill it. No cards left in their hand, which is also good. So, oh my gosh, now I... <laughs> yeah, that is pretty nasty. So now we don't even have to mark, which I don't think we will. Skulldugray, this is a one-mana spell. Doing oodles of work here. So... Yep, do that. Skullduggery, we're going to buff our guy. I guess it, either way we're getting that extra damage in. So we'll weaken you, pay our one mana. Kill your things. And then play Frenzied Raptor, because four more damage on board. All right, so we get there playing against a pirate deck. They have some good value spells. Dive down's pretty good against this because our removal's fairly expensive or sorcery speed. We didn't see any bounce, which is good news because we are Mark the Vampire deep. Um, pretty efficient creatures though. The two drop two threes could definitely be an issue against us when we're running four nest robbers. Uh, they have a treasure theme with Dead Eye Plunderer. No visible evasion, though, which is good news for our cobbled wings, which we've yet to see. But in terms of sideboard, not that much, once again. Demolish, not going to be good against treasures or land, so I think we're just sticking to the same game plan here. All right, well, this is a keep. We've got our cobbled wings, which is what we wanted, and we've got a nest robber that could potentially do a little bit of beating. A wee bit of beating. Mark the Vampire, okay. Did we see any removal from our opponent? I, I can't recall. I don't think that we did. Which is good news. Can't stress enough how good that news is. Blue-red. Huh. I thought you were blue-black. Stormfleet Aerialist. Alright, that's fine, actually. So, I guess we're gonna get in there. We're going to hope they don't trade, but I think we do have to offer the trade. We don't have to offer the trade. I'm just going to offer the trade. All right. I didn't want them to make the trade, but if I don't offer the trade, I don't know. It doesn't seem very good to me. 
Because then what are we doing next turn? Playing a Cobbled Wings? Trying to do something with that? I mean, we still... Ooh, Lannery. Well, Lannery's pretty good in their deck. Especially on an empty board. Ramp plus fix. Plus beat. It's pretty good. Interloper is a good draw. So we'll go Cobbled Wing Pass. Interloper with a Mark of the Vampire that flies might be good enough. Could possibly be good enough to bring us right back into it. All right. Another mark. All right, let's get our interloper down here. Kind of want it to be a 3-3. Three, three. Good. We're going to leave that on top. Um, so, okay. Next turn we can mark, fly, start gaining some life, hope they still don't have removal. We're going to take Lannery Storm hit because I kind of want to mark next turn. I think that does a lot for us. They could potentially deal six to us here. It's pretty good, actually. But I'm thinking the mark is still better. See what their follow up play is. Well, the good news is they can take one mark, but they can't take two. See if they have the removal. Infamous removal. So they can deal seven, eight, nine damage to us next turn. It's pretty good damage, actually. But we can play Raptor and leave up Sure Strike to kill Lannery. Keep our Raptor if we need, but I guess they kind of know about the Sure Strike. We can also gain eight life instead, which is pretty good. Interloper, Prosperous Pirates. So they could get in for 6, 8, 9, 10, 13 next turn. Still not lethal, especially with this life gain we're going to get. So let's get in there. If 
Play the Raptor. We're going to keep the Swamp a secret here if we can. And pass. So we'll see how they attack because we have a pretty good chance to be able to just kill our opponent next turn. I don't think they can deal 20 damage either, so we're probably fine. Especially if they attack with everything. They are. So we're just going to... Can't I just block Sailor of Means, though? I think I am. Because... We're going to see what happens. Mm-hmm. Okay. They play Fathom Fleet Cutthroat, I guess they, they can do that. Is my guess. In which case, we're still pretty handily winning. Alright, so they did have a cutthroat. Which isn't, I mean, it's okay. Basically, we traded a Sailor of Means for a Frenzied Raptor, which isn't a great trade for us, but they also lose four of their treasure, which is actually pretty relevant when you have Captain Lannery Storm out, and you're racing. Um, but they do have quite a bit of damage on board, so... I may have to just preemptively cast a sure strike to make sure we don't die. Because they can, with Lannery Storm, deal 7, 8, 11, 14, 17 damage. Which is still not lethal by my count. Wow, that's nice too. So. Probably just attack. Go to 19. Blast the Prosperous Pirates. Actually, blast the Freebooter. Well, that's their weakest guy. But the thing is, they can block next turn. Maybe we don't want to do Fire Cannon Blast yet. Because they might just be holding the Freebooter back so they live. So maybe I just sure strike now to gain 8 life in case of shenanigans. And then I save the fire cannon blast for next turn so that they think that they're going to live, basically. Because they're going to be like, yeah, I can't die, so what's the problem? I'm just going to block with my freebooter, and then we'll be like, no, we're blasting that. Is that, I mean, I could do it now, but like I said, 7, 10, 13, we're not really in danger unless they generate like a thousand treasure cards somehow. And I want them to think that their freebooter is going to save them, basically. And the only reason I cast Short Strike is just in case... Because it would have been cutting it a little bit closer, I guess. They still wouldn't have had lethal. And this, and, and look at that. If I'd killed Freebooter, they could have replayed it. So that's even more reason not to do it. Which two did they get back? Sailor Means and the Aerialist. Unfortunately, they're still going to have... I mean, next turn, can't I just... I guess I still don't quite have the mana to blast plus... Uh, I feel like we're just gaining a lot of life, though, so we're probably okay. You're going to cast... Uh, so seven... Oh, and maybe they attack with the Freebooter, honestly. That would be awesome. Yeah, I think they do probably attack with it, too, because they have, yeah. So this is just 
not playing the Fire Cannon Blast proved to be incredibly good for us, because now they are just deader than a doornail. And they're like, yeah, what are you going to do, bro? I got an aerialist, bro. What are you going to do? And then I'll just be like, kill it, kill you. Kill that. Fly right over top. Get in there. Mark the Vampire. Mark of the Vampire, folks. There it is. All right. See you in round three.